Hello! Today we're going to be solving a bunch of equations like this one. So they are trigonometric equations and we are not going to be allowed the use of a calculator for any of these questions. So the first thing that you should keep in mind is that really limits the number of possible answers that we're going to have for our equations because there aren't that many angles that we know sines and cosines for. There's really only 30 degrees, 45, 60, and the variations of that in the other quadrants. So this first example begins with a very obvious move, which was to subtract the cosine from both sides. Now, a lot of times when we have one equation that has both the trigonometric functions, sine and cosine, we try to do a next step that is like choosing one of them and transforming the other one into that. But in this case, I think that would be adding an unnecessary complication because we would have to put a square root there since the Pythagorean identity is telling us that the cosine is equal to the square root of 1 minus sine squared. And I mean, you can do it this way. You can now square both sides to get rid of the square root and maybe try that path on your own, but that's not what I'm going to do. Instead, I'm choosing to divide both sides of the equation by the cosine because that takes me to another familiar place, which is sine over cosine is the tangent. And after that, I've just divided both sides by the square root of 3. So now I know that the tangent of the x that I'm looking for is 1 over root 3. And this is the kind of step where a lot of people think that this is the most difficult because... So far, I was just manipulating an equation, and it didn't really matter that these were trigonometric functions. But right now, I really have to think about the trigonometry of it, and also about the fact that I don't have a calculator for this question. I'm going to choose to do that by drawing a little right triangle, just because I know a lot of things about the trigonometric ratios in right triangles. So this is just a generic triangle. There's nothing special about the way I'm drawing it. I'm going to use it though to figure out some things about this x. I need to put it somewhere in the triangle, so I'm going to put it here. The x is this angle here, and the information that I have from the question is that the tangent of that angle is 1 over the square root of 3. So what is the tangent of an angle in a right triangle? That's the opposite leg divided by the adjacent leg. So that needs to be 1 over the square root of 3. That works out if I just put a 1 here and a square root of 3 down there because then the tangent is the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. Now that you have two sides of that right triangle, you actually have the third one as well. Just by using Pythagoras, you will figure out that the hypotenuse needs to be 2. Now, here's the thing. This is the crucial step. When you look at this picture, you should already recognize this triangle and write down the answer. It's as simple as that. Because, like I said in the beginning, there isn't a lot of variation there aren't that many options for what the answers can be in a problem without a calculator. So in this case, what is this angle? It's 30 degrees because it belongs in this very special right triangle that I know by heart. I know that I said 30 degrees, but I wrote down pi over 6 because the domain that the function is asking you to give your answers in is given in radians, right? So we might as well give our answers in radians as well. But the problem is not over because this is just one answer and there might be more, okay? Every time that they ask you to solve an equation, it's to give all possible solutions. And in order to do that, I'm going to draw a second picture. So this time I'm drawing a circle instead of a triangle. This is the unit circle and the domain that the question is asking about is from 0 to 2 pi. So he wants to go around the whole circle once looking for solutions to the equation. We've already found one, pi over 6, which is in the first quadrant. And the information we had was about the tangent, right? So the tangent has to be the same. What other angles in the circle can also have the same tangent as pi over 6? Well, there is another one. If you 
prolong this straight line here to find another angle in the third quadrant, then that thing is going to have the same tangent because, so the values of sine and cosine of this angle are the same as, as that one, right? They're just negative. They're both negative because this cosine was on the right and now it's on the left. And this sine was above here and now it's below here. So they're the same values, but negative, both of them. And since the tangent is one divided by the other, if both of them become negative, that cancels out and the tangent is the same number. So in order to write the answer, we just need to figure out what this angle is. Well, half a circle here was pi. So that's six pi over six. And one more, it's seven pi over six. Second question. Here's how they try to add variation to something that can't really have too much variation. So this problem is doing two things. First, he has cosine of x over 2 instead of just a plain x. So that's just one more step that you're going to have to do. And the second thing is that he has changed the domain. Now he wants to go all the way to 6 pi, so that means going around the circle three times. And you do have to think about how those two things go together, right? Because that's the domain for x, not the domain for x over 2. But I'm going to leave that to the very end of the question. Instead, I'm just going to begin solving this normally. Well, the first two steps in the solution were very obvious. I just subtracted one from both sides of the equation, and then I divided both sides by four. So now we are, once again, at that point where we have to think about the trigonometry. So once again, I've drawn a right triangle and put my angle there, which in this case is called x over 2. But this time I have information about the cosine of that angle. Remember in the previous problem it was tangent, but now it's cosine. And in the right triangle, the ratio for cosine is the adjacent leg divided by the hypotenuse. So in order to make that fit into the square root of 2 divided by 2, I'm going to put the square root of 2 here, which is the adjacent leg, divided by the hypotenuse, which I am going to say is 2 in order to fit with the information that I have. Now, if you just use Pythagoras, you will find the value of the third side of the triangle. This other leg is also the square root of 2 which is very interesting because it makes it an isosceles triangle. So it's not the same as the other triangle that we found in the first question, but it's the only other triangle that it could be, right? Because there's only these two triangles that we know by heart and we know everything about them. One is the 30, 60, 90 triangle that we used before. And then there's this one, which is the isosceles right triangle. Actually, in my mind, the way that I have this one memorized is this one here with 1, 1, and the square root of 2 instead of roots 2, roots 2, and 2. But it's the same thing, right? It's just a scaling down where all of the sides have been divided by the square root of 2. And the only isosceles right triangle that exists is this one where the angles are 45 degrees. So I'm going to write down x over 2 equals pi over 4 because once again I'm interested in the answers in radians and now let's put that in the unit circle so my first solution pi over 4 is here and now I have to think about where else in the unit circle I can also find other angles whose cosine is the same this square root of 2 over 2 now the cosine of this angle is here the horizontal projection of that radius. And the other angle that I can find on the circle that also has this cosine is this other angle right down here. So let's figure out what is the value of that angle. I could think that I'm going down from the beginning here instead of going up, and then I would call that negative pi over four. But I don't want to do that because I already see that in the domain that he wants, it's all positive numbers, so I don't really care about a negative number here. So instead of going down, I'm going to get to this point by going around the circle, almost a full time, and let's see how many pi's over 4 that is. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 pi over 4. That's is the angle right here. 
And since in this question, I'm going to go around the circle more than once, let's see what the next one is going to be. The next one is going to be at the same point as the pi over 4 is, but after having gone around the circle once, right? So I got 7 pi over 4, 8, 9 pi over 4 is going to be my next solution. But at this point, I think I'm finally ready to multiply this whole thing by 2. So 2 pi over 4 is going to be pi over 2. And then the next one is 7 pi over 2, 9 pi over 2, and so on. Now, finally, let's think about the domain. He wants me to go all the way up to 6 pi. And since all of these are over 2, it's going to be helpful to think of 6 pi as 12 pi over 2, so that it's easier to compare. Well, 9 pi over 2 is still smaller than that, but 15 pi over 2 is bigger than 12 pi over 2, so I don't need this solution after all. I'm going to take it off the list, and I'm also not going to need any further ones. So take away the dot, dot, dots. So here we go. These are the three solutions that we have left, which means that my original equation had three solutions that I was interested in. Hopefully I was able to solve the second question a little bit faster than I did the first one, because that's what I was trying to do. But also I want you to see that they were not different at all as problems, even though they were different equations, you go through the same sequence of steps, okay? So you don't have to worry that in this kind of exercise you're going to have to figure out brilliant and new ideas for a new equation that they throw at you, because it's not, it's always the same. You pretty much just organize your equation, draw one of the triangles, it's always going to be one of these two triangles. So you can find your first solution as an acute angle in the first quadrant, then you put it in the unit circle so that you can be sure to find all of the solutions to the equation. Third problem. This one is phrased a little bit differently because instead of giving me a domain and asking for all of the solutions within that domain, he just says that he wants one solution. Whichever one is the smallest value of x that is still positive. So once again, I have drawn the right triangle here. It turns out to be the 45 degree angle again. Um, this theta here is x over 2 minus pi over 3, okay? So I know that its cosine needs to be 1 over the square root of 2. Pythagoras gave me the other side as usual, so I know that theta should be pi over 4 here in the first quadrant. And the other angle that has the same cosine is this one down here, which I can refer to as either negative pi over 4 or 7 pi over 4. But either way, I want to figure out what happens to x now. So I have to say that x over 2 minus pi over 3 is the thing that is equal to the pi over 4. I'm starting with this value up here. And then I'm just solving this equation for x. I start by adding pi over 3 on both sides. Then I put both fractions in the same denominator, add them together, and multiply both sides by 2, finding x equals 7 pi over 6, which is a perfectly good positive number to have as a solution for this equation. But the question was asking for the smallest possible one. And at this point, I still don't know if this is it. So let's try with the other value. I want to try to make it smaller not to make it bigger. So instead of going for 7 pi over 4, which is a bigger number, I'm going to go to negative pi over 4, which is a smaller number, okay? So let's see what changes in the calculations. If I have a negative here, this thing was negative, this thing was negative. Now here when I'm putting them together, it's negative 3 plus 4, so it's not 7. It's just 1 pi over 12. There's no 7 here either. So there you go, a smaller answer than the one we had before, which makes this the actual answer to this question. Now, I have a bunch of other trigonometric equations that I want to solve with you, but I think I'm going to leave them for the next video because they involve a few more tricks, and these three were just following the same sequence of steps. They were basically all the same problem three times, so I think that's nice as a theme for this video. See you on the next one.